I hope everybody got some sleep. I slept at 5.30 today, <laughs> so I'm going to be running off early. So we've not met in a long time, actually. So it's nice to see you all here. I would expect some more people to come in late <laughs> since it's Bombay. But I think we'll just start off now uh, with Rishi. He, is gonna, he works with me and uh, I don't really know what he does exactly, <laughs> but what is the title of your presentation? Uh, okay, uh, basically I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, how to market your video games, but obviously without spending any money because uh, any idiot can throw money at a screen and make things happen. The whole idea is to do it with minimum cost and to do so in such a way where you save time and focus more on creating a quality product. So that's what I'd be talking about. So unfortunately, Eric and Rahul uh, from Orange Byte were not able to join us today. So their talk will be replaced by an open house where we'll just everybody will just chill, get some food, and you know, just share gyan. <laughs> so I, I won't uh, interrupt much longer. I'll let Rishi start with this thing. Then You're already running late. All right. Um, yep. Yeah. Cool. Uh, hi guys. Uh, I'm. My name is Rishi. Uh, I've been uh, marketing video games for almost four years now. First for uh, EA, and then uh, Game for You, and now Disney. So uh, what I'm going to be speaking to you guys about today is uh, how to market your video games with minimum cost. Because at the end of the day, I mean, let's face it. We're, we're not at that stage where we can have dedicated resources to push out a killer marketing campaign, to have banner ads all over the place, to cut TVCs, to even cut developer diaries itself, even, even for us at Disney, is, is a big problem because we don't have the bandwidth or resources. So, I mean, it, it's a question of market size, and we're not there yet. So what I'm going to do today is explain to you how, it's, how easy it is to get things done with zero budget. Uh, and uh, this is obviously above and beyond the usual cost of acquisition services some of, guys, some of you guys use, like uh, VServe and AdMobi. So the whole idea is to create noise with, without spending a cent. Uh, now, according to Philip Kotler, who apparently is the Gabe Newell of marketing, according to him, marketing means this pile of bullshit, which uh, great wall of text, TLDR, zero fucks given, because it's irrelevant for any of us here. I mean, no one needs this shit. Unless you're doing an MBA, no offense to anyone who has. This is kind of irrelevant for anyone in the gaming, in the gaming scene. And to this, I say, cool story, bro, because it's irrelevant. I mean, seriously irrelevant. The only thing we need to know on how to, on how to get noise and how to get our games out there is just two things. Two things, that's it, just two simple things. One, where does your game fit? And two, how you can get it, how you can do it for zero. Now, uh, where does it fit is basically a function of you knowing your game. Now, as creators, I mean, I'm sure all of you know your games inside out. It's just a question of paying a little more attention to the finer details and how you can do it. For, and it's also a question of knowing your audience. So if you're making a game, who are you making it for? And, what are they, and what, what's your audience like? Who's going to be playing it at the end of the day? And can you do it for zero is more of a question of uh, knowing your way around the internet, knowing your way, uh, a way, knowing your way around your phone book, and most importantly, shameless self-promotion at events like this. So yeah, that's all you need to know. So avoid that pile of bullshit. If any of you unfortunately have the sad misfortune of coming across a thick marketing book, run away from it. You do not need it. So yeah, that's there. So now the first part is, uh, where, where does your game fit? It's a question of, like I said, know all the things. All you need to know, it, it starts with knowing your product, knowing your game inside out. And you know, it's, it's important for one simple reason, because uh, instead of spending a shitload of money trying to get ads running on, on, on various websites or running a Google Ads campaign or running crap on Facebook where you're spending a, a lot of money telling people about your game, what's important is that the content itself sells. And that's something very few people seem to understand. I mean, we're more likely to say, oh my god, here's my credit card. Zuckerberg, take it, put like 100 US worth of ads a day. That's not going to get you traction. At the end of the day, you want something that, that people will remember. So you might as well look at your content. So the whole idea is know your game, get your hands dirty, know the finer details. Like for example, you could be working on a game where, the, where, one, where one simple feature is character customization. Now since you're already working on a feature like that, it shouldn't be too tough to, to, to create a watered down version of it, probably make it as a Facebook app to get people interested in your game earlier. So something like that could work. 
I mean, know each and every detail. Sometimes the smallest detail could just help you out. So it could be, I mean, like for example, one of our games on the on the App Store right now is Cricket Fever Challenge. It just got an update. Uh, how many of you play FIFA? Yeah, so I'm sure you guys know that in, in FIFA, uh, third, in, from FIFA 10 onwards, you had something where called the ultimate team, where depending how you play, uh, your, uh, I, I mean, your, your, your team will be higher on, on the global leaderboards. So we have a feature like that in our game. And that's, that, that's something we're using, pushing to our communities to let people know that, you know, hey, Cricket Fever Challenge is awesome. You should be playing it because, you know, your favorite team, Mumbai Indians, KKR, whoever is winning. Uh, the whole idea is, yeah, put pieces together. Now, an early example of this, something I worked on way back, was uh, Brutal Legend. Now, uh, I mean, Brutal Legend was this game which featured Jack Black. It had a lot of heavy metal elements. It was an insanely good title. But uh, we had no money. I mean, after all, you wouldn't have money if, you, if you're only pu pushing 900 units. So uh, what we did was, uh, we, we, luckily enough, through a, th through a friend of a friend, we found someone at Rolling Stone. So what we did there was uh, we managed to get on board with Rolling Stone for uh, their Rock Awards, which is a yearly thing. So at the cost of just uh, four copies of the game and probably 10 t-shirts, we managed to get 30,000 people on ground to, to play Brutal Legend. All right. We managed to get coverage in four cities, Mumbai, Bangalore, Pune, and Delhi. All right. And it was at the cost of barely 10 grand. So I mean, yeah, sure. What, I mean, cost to me 10 grand. I don't actually pay anything in cash. It's just a complete barter. And it worked out. And the end result was EA was puking rainbows because the US team couldn't even do what we could do. So you know, the whole idea is uh, find the right fit. And that's, what, that's something which uh, you should be able to do with your, with your game. Figure out where you think it makes sense and pitch it there. Because end of the day, there are people who just want content and they're willing to carry it for free. Then the next thing is knowing your audience. I mean, I mean who's, who's going to be playing your game? Is it going to be, is it a mother of two who's 40 plus? Is it, is it an 18-year-old kid, 18-year-old guy who, who's in engineering? Who is your audience? It's a question of that. So, you know, so then keeping that in mind, you should be able to, you should be able to know what their day is like. You know, instead of, because when it comes to thinking about your audience, a lot of people try to boil it down to, oh, SEC, A, uh, whatever f lives in metros and all that bull crap. That, that's not relevant. What you need to do is think what, what the hell keeps this guy awake at night? What the hell gives him the, uh, gives him the ability to continue existing? It's the whole idea of give, give, give your audience a name, give your audience a, uh, a, a gender, flesh it out for yourself. I mean, the moment you do that, you're able to, you, you'll be able to come up with ways and means to push your product in a direction where he's going to be and, w and give them a reason to play your game. So another example from when I first started out was uh, Dead Space. Uh, what we did here is, again, zero budget. Uh, now there's this website called uh, IndianVideoGamer.com. Uh, they have a podcast which is monthly. So what happened was, uh, now we wanted to do something around the game. We didn't have any budgets. We, all we did was give, uh, I think, what? Three posters of the game and uh, on the podcast to give away. The whole catch here was uh, whoever's listening to the podcast had to count the number of times someone, uh, the, 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 the podcast guy said, dude. So you had like three, th you had like, uh, so, and, and this was like way back, this was in think uh, couple, like a few years back. So we had people downloading a 100 MB file to hear two guys say dude 79 times, right? And at that time, the user base in Indian Video Gamer was 3,000 people. So out of 3,000 people, we had 1,500 people who downloaded the podcast. And we had, the entries were, yeah, almost like 5,000 entries because we allowed for multiple entries. And it wasn't the same guy. So I think basically half of, half of IVG took part in this. And uh, our cost is basically posters because the point is people want content. People want to partner with, with, with games in a way that isn't your usual show me the money method, which some people try to do. So that worked out quite well for us. Um, the next part is, now, I mean, like I said, all of this which, was managed, which I managed to do was free or on a barter. So now the whole idea is, how do you get your stuff done for free? I mean, how do you manage to get somebody to give you something which you, you usually have to pay for? Um, the whole idea is, one, your phone book is your best friend. Uh, it's a question of who you know. 
and everyone knows everyone. At the end of the day, it's just a question of figuring, out, figuring that bit out, piecing it together. Second part is barters. Whoever you speak to, never offer cash up front. Offer the fact, offer your audience. Like what we do is that, uh, what we do is that instead of saying that, okay, we'll pay you up front for coverage on your website, or we'll pay you for ads, what, what we just say is, hey, listen, uh, we have no money, but we have a half a million people on Facebook and Twitter. I'm sure you, that's an audience you're interested in. Let's talk. So that's, that's something we do. Or instead of that, we, we, we talk to them about what content we can share with them. So, uh, I mean, if there's something worthwhile, like, you know, like, uh, like with Cricket Fever Challenge, where you have perhaps cheerleaders in the game. So that, screenshots of that, surprisingly, are something every website wants. I don't know why. So stuff like that works. And the third thing is uh, shameless, shameless self-promotion. Wherever you go, let people know who you are. Be shameless enough to, pr to present yourself at a place like this, no matter how sleepy or brain dead you are like me. And hopefully things will work out. They usually do. Uh, but the most important tool, though, which most people tend to neglect, is community. Because people don't understand community. People feel that, oh my god, it's like way too much for me. Let me just go online and, like, and just like stalk people. No, it's more than that. Uh, there's a lot that can be done with community and community alone. Uh, we, we, just did a, we just finished a really kick-ass campaign last week, uh, for Cricket Fever Challenge, in fact, uh, which was uh, basically called Games We Play. So the whole idea was to get everyone on the internet talking about India Games and Cricket Fever Challenge. The whole idea was to get people to use the hashtag Games We Play and uh, create a conversation around uh, gaming and the hilarious anecdotes about the games people play. So we actually created a video for this. Uh, I unfortunately can't share it because uh, there are some legal issues right now we're facing with that. But uh, the whole idea is, yeah, to create a conversation, get, get people who know about games talking about it, and, and back it up with a steady flow of uh, memes, content, uh, videos, the works. So that's what we had to do. Uh, the end result was, within two days of three people being on Twitter and Facebook and trolling, we reached number two in all India. Uh, we can't beat number one. I mean, sorry, man. Sex has uh, sex got us beat. We can't do anything there. But we managed to get we managed to trend higher than IPL. We managed to trend higher than some random football game and the Congress. No offense to any football or political fans here. You too, Srini. So yeah, I mean that that was pretty cool. All, all and and the and the whole idea was to get the community involved. And the response was pretty good. I mean, when we showcased the video, we got responses like, "This video caused me cancer." And we got the trolls. We got trolls. But we also got some really good feedback. Like, you know, hey, Cricket Fever Challenge is pretty good. We've played, we, we, we actually didn't know a game like this existed. So we managed to get some good traction that way. Uh, and the actual numbers at the end of it were the, were the coolest part of it all. We had uh, 1 million tweets generated in two days. Uh, we had 16K people who, who, who participated worldwide. 1.6 million impressions. We trended in India two days. And we trended worldwide for 12 hours. But come on, man. You had, the team behind this is three people who actually were doing other stuff as well as this, so not bad at all. Uh, we had, for some reason, brands like Fast Track, BenQ, and FX India thought it would be cool to participate. Well, uh, if you guys from, if any of you brand managers are seeing this, thanks, you helped me big time. Uh, we managed to get engagement on social up by 35%, which was pretty huge, because, uh, I mean, considering everything that was happening that time, we started this on April 1st, so everyone on the internet on April 1st has their conspiracy theory hat, and they're thinking, you know, fuck this shit, we're not going to pay attention to you. We got the trend, which is pretty cool. The video itself, the videos itself got 2,000 views, which is, again, pretty good, considering all said and done is just three people trolling the internet. And uh, we trended above the IPL opening ceremony, which was pretty kick-ass. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we, th this is just one si situation where everything surprisingly works out. Because it usually doesn't, and uh, you know, there's a scenario where you're gonna where you're gonna have less time and more ideas. That's always the case, because you know, sometimes w w while you're in the process of developing, when you're when you've already reached that stage where you're just testing, you'll have a bunch of ideas on how to get your game out, how to make it better, how to do some crazy stuff to let people know it exists. But hey, guess what, kids? You're never gonna have time to get it through. You're never going to have enough time. It's always going to be a situation where you have either one guy trying to push an entire boatload of things out public, or you're just going to have a team that's already fried, you know, because they've made an entire game. They're not going to, they don't want to sit any more longer to create a trailer. So, you, so the point is, the sad truth, rather, is your execution is more important than your ideas. 
you'll never have enough time. So you just focus on what you can roll out as fast enough. I mean, I can, the number of things which, I, which we've wanted to do, uh, over, which I've wanted to do over the years, I couldn't accomplish simply because of this thing, where you're going to reach a scenario where it's more important to get things out of the gate rather than focus and iterate. Sim sim similarly with games, I'm sure all of you would like to spend, you know, two months more just to polish, three months more just to test, but hey, we're not Valve, we're not Blizzard, we don't have the time. And it, it affects us on the marketing side as well. So, I mean, like there was one time with EA, we wanted to actually have a, a illegal street racing, but, you know, never happened. And like for, even for, uh, for Cricket Fever Challenge, there were a couple of things we wanted to do where uh, um, we, we basically share the daily results of, uh, of our league with, with everyone and get a full infographic analysis thing done. You know, like how all the cool companies do it. But unfortunately, again, no time. So it's always a scenario where you're going to find that your execution is more important than your ideas. And uh, finally, at the end of the day, it's, if I had to sum it up, it's just like Tetris, man. I mean, you want to do as much as you can with as little time, energy, and effort as possible. We're all lazy. We all want to go home and chill, like play Bioshock or whatever. But you know, that's what it is. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So yeah. I just said that, dude. <laughs> no, but uh, some of the ideas which didn't happen, like, uh, for example, I mean, there's a, there's a project we're working on at, at work. It's not been announced. But uh, let's just say that half the ideas we came up with are never going to see the light of day. So it's really sad because you, know, you spend time thinking about it, and then you realize at the end moment, OK, legal has a problem. People have a problem. It's not going to work out. But that was one thing. But then aside from that, I mean, by and large, you try to get as much out of the gate as possible. So, yeah. Yep. So, the prototype, something like that. Hmm. And if it's OK, I think you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if someone has come up with a prototype and you know, if he wants to promote that game, so what would be the first step? Coaching the company or uploading or coaching? No, no, no. Uh, if it's a student, I would never suggest approaching the companies directly you will be gutted like a fish. Always, 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 if you have anything that's yours that you have ownership of, put it out to the press. Speak to people. There are guys who are reachable. I mean, I'm sure if you just go on NASCOM Facebook group itself, you'll find a bunch of guys who are there who are just writers. Speak to them. Get it out, get it out through those methods. Reason being, you don't want to be in a situation where you, where you push it to a company. They'll say, cool story, bro, great idea. We'll, we'll publish it. But then they won't give a crap about getting the name out. That's what's happened to a few people I know. I mean, if you, for example, take a look at Circlets, which was released by Hashtag Studios. The game is, game is fantastic. It was based on a student project, but they aren't getting traction anywhere. I mean, you rather go with your prototype, let a few people from the press play it. You're a student. You have nothing to lose. Get it out there. Get the word out there. Get it done organically. Get it done yourself. The moment you do that, all right, I, can, I guarantee you that every CEO at every gaming company I mean, there are, there are few and far between, but they actually spend a lot of time on the web reading up on stuff. The moment they see a, they, the moment they see a prototype on a site like MCV or Indian Video Game or, or Ale Gaming, the first thing they're going to do is give you a call, get in touch with you. You don't want to be in a situation where you go to them, let them come to you. I mean, it's the same thing with Bioshock. I mean, uh, they, they, uh, they shamelessly, uh, before, before Irrational Games got bought by 2K, they, they shamelessly pitched themselves at E3. The press, everyone, I mean, the press picked it up like no one's business. They ate out of it. They loved it. Within, within three days, there was a bidding war between EA, 2K, and Capcom. The rest is history. So you rather go to the press directly. Don't break your head going through a company. How about safeguarding the intellectual property? We're here. <laughs> well, simply because you're going to them with it, A. So, and more importantly, the moment you're, it's not, if you're looking at it from a legal standpoint, that's a completely different story. But let, if we talk in terms of perception, if you're first out there and you're speaking to the press first, all right, you have that first to market uh, impression. So the point is when, so, when, when somebody comes to you or somebody says, hey, I had the same idea, your point is, hey, I went here first. It's a question of who goes first. It's, it just boils down to that. If you're able to get out with your idea faster before anyone else is, before your competition is, then you'll have that recall value. 
So, which is why at the end of the day, it's always execution over ideas at the end of it. So, yeah. No, you're not, because here it's honestly the, the law side of things is a gray area. You want to be in a situation where you, you want less drama as possible. So my, what I recommend is throw away the law book, just throw it away, burn it, get, your, get the word out as fast as possible. That's the most important thing. We're not at that stage where, we, 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 let's face it, as an industry, we're not at that stage where we can even consider legal and, and, and do things. We're, today we're in a situation where I see a game called Street Cricket Champions on the show floor at, at any retailer for PS2. I see the same game with same cover art on PC, and I know it's a PS2 exclusive, so, and Sony themselves can't do anything about it. That's where we're at. Get it out as fast as possible. Worry about that crap later. Anyone else? Yeah. See, uh, the point is, I, I mean, look, rather than, rather than spending money on, on Facebook and ads or, or banner marketing, uh, see, the problem if you do that here is that you're never going to get a, fi a straight figure from any website. All the web admins, all the guys who run these sites are very cagey about their figures.